and its implementation. So I will be covering the web service first, and then Arjun will be uh, covering the data uploading, and uh, Anusha will be covering the type of web services, and again I'll make uh, the presentation about the thematic mapping. Let's get started with the first module. That is web services. Before jumping into web services, I will explain a little bit about what is service and its type. Now service is a platform that helps to use or access our data as a service to our application. Service helps us visualizing our data over map or to perform any analysis. It also allows efficient data management. Now it is used to create products, process or supply chains and can be published, located or invoked over the network. There are multiple type of services. Uh, as we can see here, we, there are total. Uh, we have added four services, different type of services like web service, service oriented architecture, ArcGIS web service, OGC web service. So first, like I will make uh, the, I'll go through all of you one, uh, one by one on the all kind of services. So first we will be uh, discussing about the web service. They are XML based information exchange systems that use internet for direct application to application interaction. These systems can include programs, objects, messages, or documents. Some basic key points uh, that are important for web services are they are available over the internet or private networks and uses a standardized XML messaging system. It is not tied to any one operating system or programming language and is self-describing via common XML grammar. Software applications written in various programming languages and running on various platforms can use web services to exchange data over computer networks like the internet in a manner similar to you know, inter-process communication on a single computer. The interoperability uh, is due to the use of open standards, like we can use you know, uh, in different languages like Java, Python, or Windows, or Linux applications. So this is how web services are helpful. Moving towards the next service, that is service-oriented architecture, also, we can, uh, you know, uh, short it down to as a SOA service. So SOA allows users to combine many facilities from existing services to form applications. SOA encompasses a set of design principles that are structure system development and provide means of integrating components into a coherent and decentralized system. It is a based computing, uh, uh, SOA based computing packages functionalities into a set of interoperable services, which can be integrated into different software systems belonging to separate business domains. As we can see here, SOA is divided into different components. So the main components are like application front end, service, service repository, service bus. And then as we can see here, service leads to the two major components for uh, like that are business logic and data. So this was all about SOA. Moving forward with the ArcGIS web service, it's but ArcGIS web service will be used all over the module and majorly we will be talking about ArcGIS web services only. So it's a very important to understand why and like what is ArcGIS web service and why do we use it? So the two major reasons for using ArcGIS services are because of their extensibility and ease of use. So first I'll explain the service type. Now ArcGIS web service represents a GIS resource such as a map, image, or feature class that is located on an ArcGIS service site and is made available to client apps such as MapViewer. With incorporation of web service approach, ArcGIS capabilities can be more extensively implemented than ever before. ArcGIS web, web service allows data mapping and geoprocessing resources and capabilities to be shared beyond the traditional organizational boundaries. They are device and software agnostic and can be found across multiple servers for integrated use within a common environment. The web service standards and methods list above touches on more than you need to know to incorporate web services into your GIS business activities. With ArcGIS desktop applications, non-developers can take advantage of user-friendly tools to create, publish, and share business information via web services without an expert knowledge of software design. 
so it's very easy like now if for the people who don't you know uh, know how to differentiate between a web service and arcgis web service again arcgis is because if we are using gis data so we have to use the arcgis server to host our services and so on so it's a very easy software which you don't have to be in expertise as i already mentioned you can easily create or publish your data just by following very easy steps we'll be going through uh, that in a current session so moving on to the type of arcgis services that we have so there are multiple services some of them are feature service used to store you know vector data and have the editability cap capability like if you want to edit your data so feature we generally publish the data as a feature service if we want to edit it similarly we have image service which can be used to store raster data and is dynamic and then others you know there are many ways to create and share these services like you can use arc map or arcgis online or portal to create and share you will be learning all about this in more detail in next topics by anusha and arjun so we'll be covering the last service last web service that is ogc web service this service is defined by ogc itself as name suggests right so our ows requests are defined using the hypertext transfer protocol or http we can say and are encoding using key value pairs that is kvp structures or extensively marked cup language that is xml you can go through these links for more details and different web services we have provided these links please go through it and you will understand uh, what are the type of services and web services that we use so now this was all about the web services and uh, different kind of web services i will be transferring transferring the um, now i will hand over the session to anusha which she will explain about the type of web services hi everyone uh, moving on the next topic that we will be covering is the type of web services so uh, number one is wms that is web map service a web map service defines an interface that allows a client to get maps of geospatial data and gain detailed information on specific features shown on the map a map is defined here as a visual representation of geospatial data not the geospatial data itself a web map service can number one produce a map as a picture as a series of graphical elements or as a package set of geographic features data number 2 answer basic queries about the content of a map and number 3 tell a client what map it can produce and which of those can be queried further unlike a web co coverage service or a web feature service wms is not intended to provide access to the original unprocessed data uh, the uh, web c uh, the uh, web coverage service and uh, web feature service will be covered in next topic so um uh wms published to arcgis service has the following uh, operations available uh, that are uh, number one get capabilities get map uh, get feature info get styles and get legend graphic so it act as a client by combining a number of images served by other wms servers it can also accommodate an extension using a style layer descriptor and a symbology encoding and offers the capability to restrict the features are displayed by using a filter as defined by filter encoding specifications um, so the next type of web service is web feature service so it allows a client to perform data manipulation operations on one or more geographic features data manipulation operation include the ability to get or query features based on spatial and non spatial constraints create a new feature modify a feature or delete a feature the web feature service standard specifies the behavior of a service that provide transaction on and access to geographic features in a manner independent of the underlying data stored it specifies 11 different operations uh, grouped as 
uh, number one that is discovery operation which allows the service to interrogate it and determine its capability and to retrieve the application schema that defines the feature types the next one is query operations which allow features or values of feature properties to be retrieved from the underlying data stored based upon the constraints of future properties defined by the client in addition the client should be able to specify which feature properties to fetch and should be able to constrain the query spatially and non spatially next one is locking operations that allows a log request on one or more instances of a feature type or or for the duration of a transaction to ensure that serializable transactions are supported uh, number four is transaction operations that service transaction request and number fifth is operation to manage parameter uh, parameterized query expressions um, the basic web feature service uh, service allow query and retrieval of features a transactional web feature service allow creation deletion and updating of features uh, so the next one is wmts which is web web map tile service web map web map tile service specification is an international specification for serving digital map over the web using cached image tiles when you create a cache map or image service using arcgis server the server as the service and its tiles are automatically accessible using wmts specifications and wmts published to arcgis server has the following operations available number 1 to make your cached map or image service available in an open recognized way across different platforms and clients and additionally wta wmts services are an effective way to make our arcgis server cache uh, map or image service run faster on gc clients to publish a wmts service you need to create a cache map or cached image service unlike other types of ogc services there is no wmts capability option to enable when creating a cache map or image service WMTS is always enabled. The next service is WCS, which is Web Cover Coverage Service, which provides an open specification for sharing raster data sets on the web. Azure Server allow you to publish WCS services from imagery collection, maps, or geo database that contain rasters. To create a WCS service. you need to create one of these services and enable the wcs capability the source for wcs services should be one of the following that is a map containing raster layer or mosaic layers a, a, a raster data set or a mosaic data set a layer referencing a raster data set or a mosaic data set and or a geo database that contains raster a wcs service return data in a format that can be used as input for analysis and modeling this is in contrast with a web map service which only returns a picture of the data the raster data set made available through wcs services are referred to as converges the next one is wps which is a web processing service it is an international specification for serving and executing geospatial processing on the web you can create a wps service by enabling the wps cap capability when publishing a geo processing service wps services and their accompanying tasks are either synchronous or asynchronous synchronous means that client application will wait while the task executes on the server a synchronous means that client application do not have to wait for the task to finish on the server before moving on to the other task for both execution modes task results can be stored on the server and referenced through a url or they can be streamed directly back to the clients a client application work with a wps serv service by appending parameters to services url The next service is catalog service for web. Catalog services support the ability to publish and search collection of descriptive information that is metadata 
for data services and related information objects. Metadata is in catalogs represent resource characteristics that can be queried and presented for evaluation and further processing by both humans and software. Catalog services are required to support the discovery and binding to registered information resources within an information community. The scope of the CS, CSW includes catalog interface standards, specify the interfaces bindings and a framework for defining application profiles required to publish and access digital catalogs of metadata for geospatial data services and related resource information. Metadata act as a generalized property that can be queried and returned through catalog services for resource evaluation and in many cases invocation or retrieval of the reference resources. Catalog services support the use of several identified query languages to find and return result using well-known content models such as metadata schemas and encodings. So uh, to understand the uh, that which type of service can expose which capabilities, th this is a table. So here we can see that the map services is supported by WCS, WFS, WMS and WMTS while it is not supported for WPS. Uh, the geodata services are supported for WCS and WFS and not for the rest of the services. Uh, while the image that, are, that is the raster services is supported in WCS, WMS and WMTS while it is not supported for WFS and WPS and uh, WPS only supports the geos processing services. So moving on, I'll show a demo to how, how to publish a vector and raster data. So I'll, I'll just change my screen. Uh, so I'm using ArcMap, Arc Desktop to uh, publish a service. So uh, here uh, I have a service that contains contains point that is a uh, that is vector. So we will publish this as a survey uh, as a service. So uh, we'll go to the file and then uh, we'll share it as a service from here. Then next button. Uh, we can name the service as uh, any service for now. I am keeping it in this way. Just go on next. So uh, we can choose the folder here. I have made a testing folder, so I'll publish the data on that. Then continue. Okay. So here you can see that there are uh, many uh, like uh, bifurcations like we can select the parameters capabilities and uh, sharing options. So we'll go to the capabilities and here you can see there are different type of uh, uh, service that is supported for this vector data. So I'll just enable the feature access also so that we can publish this vector data as a map service as well as a feature service. So um, uh, after that, we, there are option to analyze the uh, web service and preview it also. So I'll just go to the item description and here I'll write uh, the summary and description. Okay. And after that, you can analyze it, preview it and we will publish this service. So it takes uh, a little time. So I have already uh, published one service. I'll show. I'll just show the URL of that service. So here you can see that uh, I have an I've, I enabled the feature access option. So my service is published both as a feature service also here, and we have the uh, options. You can see in uh, feature service we have the option to query and apply edits while uh, it is also published as a map service. 
so coming back here uh, we can also uh, uh, publish the uh, register data likewise so i'll just add the register data here this is the raster data so i'm just adding it here So from here, we can uh, just uh, right click on the service and uh, here you can see the uh, option of share as image service. So I'll just click on it. And this dialog box will appear. Then we can go to next. Here I can write the name. Testing folder. I'll just keep it here. So similarly, there are uh, capabilities parameters. You can select the uh, different functionalities. I'll go to the capabilities. Here for image service, I have this option uh, WMS and WCS. So we can uh, publish it as a WMS or WCS because raster data only support this type of services. So for now, I'm just uh, 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 publishing it as an image service. So when I'll go, then I'll go to item description. And then uh, similarly, you can analyze, preview uh, the, your service if, the, if you want to check it or otherwise you can publish it. And uh, after publishing, it will look like it will look something like this. This is the image server that I published. So it will look like something. The URL will be like this. So this was my part. Now moving on, I'll just hand hand it over to Arjun. We will explain about upload data module. Thank you. Hello, good evening, everyone. Is my screen visible? Okay. So we'll start a lecture. So okay. So I'll be uh, greetings everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the uploading the data on RGS online platform. As we know, as we know, we can create web maps on RGS online, which can be used in multiple other applications with other widgets like the web builder, experience builder, insight apps, uh, operational dashboard. For adding those layers on the web map, first the user must host those on RGS online platform. So the supported file types, which can be hosted on RGS online platform, are CSV or XLS files, GeoJSON files, shaped shape file in zip format, shape file in zip format, and file geodatabase in zip format. So as we can uh, as we can see, only uh, shape file and geodata uh, file geodatabase are being hosted in zip format. So why so? Because when we uh, save the shape file. There are multiple files saved for a particular shape file uh, in different format, which are .cpg that contains the uh, specify the code page for identifying the correct set to be used. Then there is one .dvf that defines the database table that stores the attribute information of feature required. And there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the geometry and the attribute, which is based on the record number. Then there is a .prg, which uh, which stores the coordinate system for the shape file. Then there is one dot shp which is the main file that stores the feature geometry and then there is dot shx that stores the index of the feature geometry now coming to file geo database uh, file geo database is a collection of geographic data sets of various types held in common file system folder then uh, it contains feature data set a feature data set is a collection of related feature classes that share a common coordinate system and a feature class are homogeneous collection of common features each having the same spatial representation, such as points, lines, polygons, and have a common set of attribute columns. So as you can see in the table, there are the uh, there are these uh, type files which can be hosted on the RGS online. 
as a feature hosted layer or a table hosted layer. So as you can see, a CSV file or an XLS file that contain the coordinates as well as the attribute will be hosted as a feature layer. While the CSV or XLS file, which have only attributes, no special information about those features will be hosted as a table. Then we have GeoJSON file, which contains the geometry as well as the attributes will be hosted as a feature layer. Then the zipped format shape file and zipped formats file geodatabase will also be hosted as a feature layer. So while we are talking about the feature layer, uh, we should know what are these. So once these files are hosted on RGS online platform, user can perform many operations like access and display features, SQL and spatial queries, edit features, sync and extract data. User can store and manage different type of data as hosted in layers in RGS. Each type of hosted layer reference is a specific type of data service. Each data service supports a specific set of operations. Therefore, the functionality available in a hosted layer is determined by the type of data service it is referenced. In general, all data services allow client applications to optimally access and display the data in map and scene. So now coming to the hosted feature layer, a hosted feature layer is a reference to a feature layer in the feature service used to store your data. A feature layer is a specially enabled table that contains features with the geometry and attributes. Application can use feature layers to access, query, edit, and display features in a map or a scene. You use a hosted feature layer when you want to import files such as CSV or XLS or Google Sheet with coordinate information. Store in collections of geometry and attribute data as features. Access and display features in map or scene. Securely share data with applications and users. Optimize accessing and displaying large amount of features. Edit data and track their edits. Also update and export data. Now coming to the hosted table, a hosted table contains the attributes of the features, but no special data about that. So a hosted table is a reference to a table in a feature service used to store your data. It contains features with attributes, but no geometry. Applications can use hosted tables to access query and edit data as standalone tables or as related tables. Hosted tables are created by importing files such as CSV, XLS, or Google Sheets that do not have special data associated with them. Users use hosted services when they want to import files such as CSV, XLS without coordinate information, store collection of data, optimize accessing large amount of data, create related table for other hosted layers, edit and track edits, perform SQL queries, update or export data, use non-spatial data in offline applications. Now moving on, how do we import the data? So first we will be going through the steps, then I will show you the demo, how we upload different types of format files into the RGS online. So the first step is to import the data so you have to go to your RGS online platform and sign in with your credentials. Then you go to the content tab. In the content tab, you cl click on the new item and the new item pane appears. The file can be imported from multiple sources. It may be your local system. It can be from your Google Drive. It can be uh, from your Dropbox or OneDrive. To import file from local system, click on your device option and the import file pan pane appears. Browse and select the file that you want to import and click open. The pop-up will ask how you want to add your file, whether you want to host the file as a feature layer or you just want to add the file to your content tab of your RGS online without publishing it. In case of hosted feature layer, the layer will be hosted on the platform and can be used to visualize the data on the map using the map viewer. However, if the file is added without the hosting, then the file will be uploaded as a document which can be up downloaded by another user or published later. After choosing the desired option, click next and enter the enter or edit the details for the edit file. After filling all the details, click save. Now the file will be visible to you as a feature layer in my content in my content test. So we will be doing the demo for the same steps that we spoke about. I'm just going to log in into my
So as you can see, we, uh, we are going to the content tab and now there is a tab for new item. So we click on the new item and the uh, new item pane appears. Here you have different options to add your files from different sources. Uh, for the demo, we are going to add all the files from our local system only. So click on your device. So I made this folder data for the session and I have different types of uh, files here. So there is this one uh, file earthquakes. I will uh, open the file too. So this is a uh, CSV file which contains the attributes for the all uh, for the earthquakes that has happened all over the world. As you can see, it has lat and long, which means it has special attributes associated with each of the features. So it will be added as a feature layer according to the table that we uh, we have shown in the PPT. We will just select the file. Now it will ask add the earthquake.csv and create a hosted feature layer or table or just add the earthquake csv so if i just click on the add earthquake.csv it will only add the file and then i can either uh, the other users can either or download it or i can sh publish it later as a feature layer so right now we are going to publish it So after that, it gives you option to select the fields that you want to add to the select uh, hosted feature layer, or you can change the display name and also the type of the field. So right now we are going to select all the fields, and also you can define the, that the time zone your data is in, as this uh, data contains an attribute with the time, which contains the times for uh, when the earthquake happened. So it gives you an option at what time this was stored. So it is a coordinated universal time only, UTC only. You click on next. Then it asks you what columns contains the lat and long. So uh, as by default, it has found that this latitude contains and the longitude. So you just click on the next. Now here we can save the title. Wait. And we can also do this take a uh, test. And we did set. So now you can see the service is hosted, and we can also view this service in a on a map here. And also, if I go to my content tab, you can see earthquake feature layer. It is as a feature layer hosted service, and also the CSV is also added to my the con my content tab. Now, users can use this to download it to their system if they want the source of the data, or they all the, using the feature layer and opening it in a map viewer. They can visualize the data and can save it as a web map, which can be later used in multiple applications that we talked about the dashboard, the experience builder, the web app builder, the insights, and many more. So this was about adding a CSV file that contains the data uh, that contains the uh, special data. Now moving on to the CSV file that doesn't have any special data. I'll just save another one. Now you can see in this one, all the attributes are same, just the lat and long has been removed. So it is an attribute, it is the features without any special information regarding them. So we will also host them. New item, your device. Now it will again ask, we will host it. Again, we can change the display name and the type of the fields. Now, see, it asked me here 
where is this special information because it cannot locate any of the lat and long field or any address fields so it asked me where your special data is stored if this file has any so here i will select this csv doesn't contain no location data and will be added as a table and you just click on next save this See, now this is hosted as a table, as we mentioned in the previous uh, the uh, table that we have in the PPT, that it will be hosted as a table. So here we can see, and we can also visualize the data in map viewer. It will not show anything on the map because they do not have any special information. So no features will be displayed on the map, but we can analyze the attributes that it has. Now moving on, we can also add the data in uh, GDB, zip GDB, zip shape file. As I told you, a shape file has many different formats and a GeoJSON. Okay, so the implementation. So now the hosted feature layer can be added and visualized on a map and can be saved as a web map. This web map can be used in different different applications for the dashboard, the web builder, story map, its data, and the experience builder. So that's all from the data hosting uh, topic. Now Yashima will continue with the next topic. Thank you, Arjun. Uh, I'll be continuing uh, with the last topic that we have thematic mapping. I'll share my screen. So we have already learned about web services and their types and how we can utilize them in different ways. We also learned how we can host or upload our data. Now we will learn to categorize data over map for better visualization. We'll be going through different type of thematic maps and the analysis that we perform to create the thematic mapping. Now what is thematic maps? To make our map to have better visualization, we make thematic maps. They help us to categorize geographic data over map. They can portray physical, social, political, cultural, economic, sociological, or any other aspect of a city, state, region, and they consider the entire globe. Now, they also emphasize spatial variation of one or a number of geographic distributions. These distributions may be physical phenomena such as climate or human characteristics such as population density and health issues. We can make these maps using our own GIS data. As you can see here in the image, maps are being categorized based on its value or data. So why do this visualization is important? To make our data understandable, we use the visualization. It can be used in many places uh, to create a business, to understand the data, even if uh, it, it's best for your students or it's best for businessmen. Any any kind of uh, uh, people can, you know, use the data to uh, use it in their respective work. Now we will see about different methods or different kind of thematic maps that we can create for multiple users. First, we have chloropleth. This is a particular suited for charting phenomena that are evenly distributed within each enumeration unit. Second, we have proportional symbol, which is also known as graduated symbols, represented data associated with point location. The data is displayed with proportionally sized symbol symbols to graphically represent a realistic difference in occurrence. Next, we have is a rhythmic map. Now, this is very interesting map as it also helps us to understand the elevation different over uh, difference over the area based on its curve change. As you can see in the first image that is here uh, in this blue image where the lines are being made, it is also known as contour maps depict smooth continuous fields such as precipitation. So this is very useful when we use the elevation data. Now next we have the chorochromatic method. 
it is used to map it is uh, like map and nominal data using various colors like color shades or symbols to distinguish classes example of chromatic maps may include soil type maps plant hardenation zone maps or language boundary maps so for example in india we don't know where which type of soil is present so what we can do is we have the data of locations we can put over the uh, data over our map and then it will give us the map of india with the color wise category okay in this location we have this kind of uh, soil and with the legend so it will make us understand our data very easily so coming to the next uh, map that is dot dot density map a dot map uses dots to show the presence of feature or occurrence and display a spatial pattern a dot density map is a popular way to use dots in creating a thematic map as you can see the third image this is an example of dot density thematic maps at last we have decimetric method it's a combination of chloropleth and isorhythmic map and it's add extra value to our maps so next like how you can create your own thematic map right so we can use you know multiple platforms either we can use arc map or arc jazz online so first here i'll be explaining how we can use arc map and then i'll be giving you the demo for the same in arc jazz online so these are very simple steps that you can follow to create your thematic map first you need to add your data in arc map then you can start with creating the map you have to go to the themes tab in create ribbon and choose set from the drop down and select the field from the drop down of which you want to build your map because obviously when you build the map if you want to display the kind of features over the map like visualization so you have to choose like if it the uh, if it is a population data so you want to uh, show uh, like total population all over the uh, state or district so you have to select a kind of field which have that kind of data so to display labels on your map you need to check the checkbox of label you can also provide color font size and font style to your label check the checkbox of color areas and the themes by percentage it will build you map based on percentage over the area now it is optional if you want to build a percentage based map or not now you can click update to make changes to your map so thematic map is applied to the map the color ramp is displayed and distinguishes the value range for each color of the thematic mapping each geography on the map is labeled with set fields and any other option you have defined you you can go through so many multiple kind of options which you as per your requirement you can choose the options then you can set additional attributes for the thematic map by clicking on advanced options this was all about creating different type of thematic mapping now we can also perform analysis to our thematic map or data so exactly what is the thematic analysis it is one of the most common form of analysis within qualitative research it emphasizes identifying analyzing and interpreting patterns of meaning or we can say themes with within qualitative data it is often understood as a method or technique in contrast to most of other qualitative analytic approaches such as grounded theory discourse analysis narrative analysis and interpretative phenomenological analysis there are simple steps that we should be very much aware about while performing thematic analysis because thematic analysis is all about doing a research or making a report of how you are performing your analysis so the first one is familiarize your self with the data now the first step in your thematic mapping involves getting a feel for your data and seeing what general themes pop up you will want to come up with you know preliminary thoughts about what you will code and what codes you will use for them and what codes will accurately describe your content so now that is how you know you should be familiarized and then second step is create your initial codes so we use the code book to define the analysis then we have collate codes with supporting data now moving from codes to themes it is not necessarily a smooth or linear process as you be, as you become you know more and more familiar with the data you may find that you need to assign different codes or themes according to what new elements you find so next step step is group codes into themes and then after you group all the codes and you identify a theme and everything then it comes the step of review and revise theme it is very important to understand your data and your 
coat is uh, like matching and is going uh, in the same direction or not. Then the final step is write your narrative because after everything you have completed, you have to write a report and then you need, you know, it will contain like introduction, methodology section and result findings and finally conclusion. So this is how you make the thematic analysis process. Now, at last, I would like to talk about what is the type of thematic analysis. The first is coding reliability thematic analysis, then code book thematic analysis, then reflexive thematic analysis. Now, what is the difference in each? We will understand that. So the first coding reliability thematic analysis, it is a necessitates the work of multiple coders and the design is specifically intended for research teams. With this type of analysis, code books are typically, you know, fixed and are rarely altered. We use predefined codes and everything. We don't alter it. And then uh, multiple coders discuss which code should be used and which shouldn't. And this consensus reduces the bias of having one individual coder decide upon themes. But now how code book thematic analysis work, it, it does not make use of a code book. And it is the most uh, like, you know, uh, it, so it is typically conducted from a deductive perspective. These codes are typically drawn from a review of the data and only when are code books produced. So the third one is reflexive thematic analysis. It is the most flexible of three analysis type because you don't have to, you know, predefine the code and everything beforehand. In this type of thematic analysis, researchers can change, remove or add codes as they work through the data. Reflexive thematic analysis can be performed by multiple researchers, but can also be an individual effort. So this is how all the three types of thematic analysis works. Now, based on your thematic data uh, requirement, you need to understand and choose the type of thematic analysis which suits best for your requirement and then follow the same. Now, I have already told you about the thematic mapping and analysis. Let's perform the creation of thematic mapping, which is very interesting and very uh, meaningful for everyone. So as I already mentioned that we will be using ArcGIS online platform uh, to, you know, work uh, to perform the demos. So I hope everyone has created the account. And uh, so first, now I have already defined my uh, data, like I have already added my data over my uh, map viewer as Arjun has also mentioned how we can, you know, upload the data and then add it over our map viewer. So I have already performed that step. I have my data ready with me over the map. So this is my data. Now, as we can see, uh, there is no meaning of this data. We can see, OK, this is the India and it is divided based on the state. To add the meaning to it, we are using, you know, we are performing the thematic analysis. So, uh, for example, if you just want to practice or so on, uh, you are not necessarily have to add the data from your local, uh, you know, system. You can also add different kind of layers using the Living Atlas. This is how ArcGIS Online provides you the flexibility of the data. Here, many open data is available, which you can add. You can search like if you want the India data or state data, district data, it will give you multiple data and you can add the layer as per your requirement and you can perform the analysis. Now I have added already. I have added the data. So first we will add the style. Now what is the style? Style is again how we will define the data in our map. So first I'll select the field as I already mentioned while uh, giving you the presentation that you need to know on which uh, field you will be performing the data. So first I'll show the table. I Just a second. I will open the table like what kind of data it is and uh, what are the fields that it is containing. So as you can see, it has name, country, then, you know, state names, person, female counts, male counts and so on. And also it has the data of the population. So average household, percentage of household, then uh, you know, like population data, male population, female population. It has so many data. So what I'll do is I will choose the most uh, field that is mainly easy for me, like uh, that I want to add. So for example, I want to perform the thematic mapping over the total population. 
So as you can see, we have the total population or total non-workers so on. So I'll be performing my thematic analysis over the total population data. So I'm adding this field. As soon as I'll add it, it will ask me to pick a style, which style I want to perform. Now here comes different kind of thematic maps. So these are, as you can see, this is count and amount based thematic map based on size or color. So if I choose the color, so it is what it has done. Now, you, as you can see over the map here, my uh, range is going from uh, the you know light blue to dark blue, which is defining OK. So this uh, light blue is uh, containing the population less than 60,000 and the dark blue is containing the uh, population uh, greater than the number mentioned. And then here we can you know change the style also. We can change here we have multiple themes like high to low or above and below. Now if I choose above and below, so what it will do is it will define the color different for below and different color for above. Color for above. Now here I have the uh, if I want to categorize more based on more fields, so I can divide it by choosing more fields here. Now here as you can see here we have a classified data. If I open the classified data, so it will you know classify it intervals. So we have four classifications here. So 64 to 16, then like this, we have divided the four intervals. We can also di divide it based on five intervals. Here, see here, it is number like if I mention 10, so it will divide my data based on 10 intervals. So this is how the interval works. So for now, I'll keep it to four. Okay, so it is five. Now here we have different classified data methods, natural breaks or equal interval, standard deviation, manual breaks. So if I click on equal interval, so what it will do is it will automatically divide it based on equal intervals. And then we can select option that what are, will be our higher and lower uh, fields. We can change the uh, style here, color. So I'll choose this one, for example. So this is how you know you can make the visualization better of your data. So as I mentioned, different kind of maps here, we have dot density map. If I select dot density, so it will uh, define the area based on dot density and it will tell you, OK, so one dot is condition containing this much of population. And you can also, you know, again, go to the style options and you can define if you want to keep uh, like which uh, number of number you want to keep for a one dot value. So this was about the dot density. And similarly, we have uh, the, you know, you can define it based on colors or locations or different unique symbols. As we can see here, again, you need to style it so that it won't go to the others one. So this is how you know you can perform the analysis. This was a demo for thematic analysis and you can perform it in the ArcGIS online and uh, practice it. So this was all about our uh, module that is data hosting and mapping APIs. So we will be uh, ending our demo here. OK, thank you all. And if there are any questions, you can uh, put up your questions. We are happy to answer that. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Yeshi and team. Uh, so there is one uh, request. Uh, the hand raised from one of the participants. Let me unmute participants. Okay, can we know the question from the participants? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so Mr. Venu Gopal uh, has raised the answer. Uh, I have unmuted. You can speak, uh, Venu Gopal. Okay, in first week webinar, uh, they used to say in JavaScript, but we are uh, using in CPP. But we are tried so many times, but the code is crashing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so. Which which specific code? Uh, if you can highlight, we have uh, speakers of uh, first week session uh, as well. They can address or maybe. Okay, first week in. session. Naya is explained. Naya yeah, Krishna Sak. That she is available. Uh, can you put your question in little brief? Okay. Can you elaborate your question? Try and see. We will try to answer.
Yeah, okay. Nandini will ask. You can uh, unmute Nandini. They can unmute themselves. So we have allowed mic for everyone. Oh, okay, okay. So I see Nandini asked a question of uh, rec recording. So yeah, we will share yeah, uh, with you all. Not issue. Any other questions? Oh, OK, we need contact details from any of you because if you have doubt means how we can conduct so, so, how, so, how to clarify those doubts. So, OK, so uh, you must have got. Uh, so how do you got to know about this workshop? Uh, obviously through email, right? 